That's the power of the cameras of life, people. Oh my gosh, no way. <laughs> 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 oh no no what's my name oh no no what's my name what's my name what inspired that all right so there was a clash yesterday which i actually missed because the whole my whole street had a power cut yesterday which was annoying but i was listening to a clash on this radio so it was drake versus rihanna right and i saw that one of the, that was one of the songs on there but it reminded me when i was in my teens i can't remember which how old i was but Rihanna performed on X Factor one year. She sang that song and that performance, oh my goodness. I think I've, I think I've probably watched that performance unhealthily too many times. <laughs> unhealthily? <laughs> unhealthily. <laughs> if, that, if that even is a word. No, but I have watched that on YouTube so many times. I think, I think that was when I was like, I actually love Rihanna so much. That's why it, it reminded me of that video. So check it out, people. Rihanna's performance on X Factor. I don't know, I don't know what year it was. But. Only thing that I don't get is that just because your power went out on your street, why could you not listen to the rest of the radio show? Oh, because me and my siblings were basically... Because obviously I, I could still use the data on my phone. When my phone was on, so I could have just carried listening to it on my phone or hotspot, but I just couldn't be bothered. And me and my siblings were just kind of like... You know when you're very excited, like, ooh, there's no... there's no. I was about to say, yeah. was it exciting? It must have been quite exciting. Yeah, it was just... It's funny because my parents literally were upstairs. They, didn't even, they weren't even bothered. <laughs> And I was joking that oh they're probably used to it because it happens like this kind of things happens in Ghana all the time. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So, so I was like, so I was like, oh yeah, this this is this is probably normal for them. So they didn't they yeah. But me and my me and, me and my, my two siblings were just downstairs getting looking gassed. outside in there in the streets like oh my gosh the whole streets the lights are off i went outside spoke to one of the neighbors he was like oh yeah it looks like the whole street's out i was like oh really oh man what a shame what a shame and i went inside you just know when you know there's like the typical british thing we do when you're like oh i wonder what's going on sort of thing like just yeah that's what we did and then uh, we got bored after a while wait were you were you guys also wants to have a street party nah did you hear about that yeah i did i actually know someone who the town that she lived in that's where it was happening and it was on Twitter. And I was like, and I messaged her. I was like, wait, isn't this where you're from? And she was like, yeah, it was in my street though. But yeah, no, it didn't happen in my street. It happened in quite a few places, I think. But one of the ones I know of was, I think one happened in Middlesbrough and a couple of other places. It was pretty mad. I, I was just blown away, really, because people were trying to adhere to the two meter uh, social distancing rule. But what doesn't make sense is the fact that you're still emitting liquid droplets. Yeah. It doesn't make, because it's all oh, two meters apart. But if you're stood here and you move and I move into the space that you're in, is that not still walking into the space that you've been in? So surely that makes no difference. So yeah, that absolute donuts. Tits of the week. They are. But we're bringing that back. They are legit. Someone the told me they, someone told me they really enjoyed, they, they enjoyed that we'd, we'd, we're doing tits of the week. So yeah, for the tits of the week is all the people who, um, <laughs> back by popular part, demand. Back by popular demand. We're bringing back tits of the week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so can we have week, like a theme song for it tits of the should, week oh, we and then make some like <laughs> and we can we do like a proper announcement yeah 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 like that like that like <laughs> sponsored by <laughs> <laughs> this week's tits of the week is sponsored by get your hot dogs from frank's burgers <laughs> <laughs> and now for your tip of the week is <laughs> basically anyone who had a street party on was it VE day? Yeah, yeah. Any of you people? Pe- people need to get a get it on lock that uh, just because you're two meters apart doesn't mean you're 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 safe. If you're running around in each other's air, you're you're still in with a high chance of catching the virus it's funny because boris said that we people should use good old british common sense and like we're not really it hasn't really like this common sense that you're speaking of has not really been portrayed in the last few days i don't know i don't know which common sense you're talking of talking about boris though what did you think of his speech we were all expecting it to be a big announcement we were thinking maybe he's gonna announce something big which will change what we were used to in the last couple of weeks but in actual fact it turned out like what so i was looking forward to listening to it or to watching it because i thought Oh yeah, like you said, there's going to be something major. I literally thought it was like it was like literally waiting for like a TV show. Like oh yeah, seven o'clock Sunday, big speech by the by the PM. Yeah, it, it was like have you, ever seen, the speech. Have, have you ever seen in those like apocalyptic movies where everyone's like huddled across the TV to, to watch like a news message? Or something? Yeah, literally, it was literally, like that. So literally. everyone's waiting, thinking yeah. it's going to be this is a big shit. And then then what happened? Then he waffled on. I actually missed a lot of it because I was like, yeah, and I went into the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I came back and I asked my, I asked my sister, wait, what's what's 
YouTube is sitting and she was like, yeah, he's just waffling. So then I listened to the rest of it and then I had to just, went, I just went to read about what he's actually said. And I was like, what, from what he was saying, I was literally like, bro, what? And then he was like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to give, so tomorrow we're going to meet up with the with the rest of the government to discuss exactly how this is going to occur. So I'm like, so what's the point of tonight then? Why do you not just wait the next day? Yeah. So the speech that he gave, it just didn't make sense because he basically said, so the next day the, he's meeting up with people from the government to talk about how exactly this is going to look like. So I was thinking, what was the point of the speech then so why not just wait till the next day to be spoken to everyone before giving the speech it's like telling people oh by the way we've got some really big news for you this is what we this is what's going to happen but tomorrow we're going to discuss how it's going to work and then we'll get back to you so why not just wait till the next day and finalize it and then come and tell everyone so there's so everyone leaves with clarity because i think a lot of people weren't sure because it's like wait go to work if you can't work from home but don't take public transport go in a car if you can but if you <laughs> if you don't have a car or a bike then then try do you know what I mean? It's literally like it's literally like what 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 do people actually do? There's so many ifs and buts and every oh this is all on this is all based on ifs. So I was like, bro, so they weren't even specific about who goes back to work and whatnot. Like all I all I got from it was con- people for people in contra- in construction. I tell you what I got from it, the fact that you are now allowed to exercise without any limitation, unlimited exercise. So now you can do a around the world with a nan or Rabona flicks across the kitchen. <laughs> he was like, you can go and play sports with your family. I just imagine, just imagine like going to play for going for going to play five aside with your mom <laughs> oh man no it was just it was just proper confusing that just shows that he, he barely knows a bit british public like who says that you're now allowed to go play sports with your family this whole this i think the way they work in this whole thing it just screams of i don't want to be blamed for this that's what i think like in a sense where he doesn't want to say anything where he'll be blamed for it later on so it's kind of like He's given vague, like a vague speech and it's not clear. So you, if you interpret it a different way and something happens, you can basically turn around and say, that's not what I meant though. Do you know what I mean? That's what, so basically the government doesn't, they don't, they don't want to be blamed for what happens if people, do you know what I mean? So that like, they don't want to blame for the recession. They don't want to be blamed about the economy crashing. They, want, they don't want to be blamed for people dying. It's kind of like, just let's just roll with it and see what happens. That's kind of like what I'm getting from it. It's just not very, not very clear. I find it funny. Like the way he does his speeches, yeah, it's like he's talking down to kids, the way he talks to yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, when like, I saw, I saw a thing here yeah, where it was like Boris' speech is like, like when the head teacher is telling you that if you guys mess up we won't be going on a trip anymore yeah that. You know the yeah that's the two ways like he's like and if anything happens i will not hesitate to put the brakes on like all right buddy <laughs> sorry <laughs> nah he's, he's he's a funny guy did you uh hear about elon musk the, the new name that elon musk gave to his yeah delta squared delta squared to the power of 3.618.17 musk or whatever it is he was joking right no, that's his that's a kid's your name nah he's joking come on nah, he's joking. it's like a triangle it's like a triangle and then the symbol and then i don't even know how to pronounce it i don't know that wasn't pro- that wasn't com- come on come on he's joking no no no, no. It, is, it is it is that's actually his kid's name how, why are you so certain because it's, it was in the news and he said it he can troll he can still be trolling only he knows then i guess <laughs> no i just find it funny how certain you're like nah he definitely named his son that no bro if, if i if you asked if you if you had a child right and i said what's your child's name and you said oh my, my child's name is this am i gonna tell him like oh you must you're trolling Bro, whoa, your kid's whoa, whoa. Name. If he told you his his child's name was what was it called? Um, it's like X A E A twelve. So, yeah, it's like a planet, bro. It's basically it's like, X just think of Arch Archangel. X Arch Archangel. Okay, fair enough. But to be fair, their mom's name is Grimes. If someone was to tell so, me that that's their kid kid's name, I would think they're trolling. But still, anyway, see, but to be fair, genius marketer, man. I mean, people just won't stop chatting about it. Look, we're chatting about it now. If his name, if his son's name was Stephen, this wouldn't have made it in. So fair enough. He's smart I mean, to be fair, his name is his name is his name is elon i've never heard of elon have you heard anyone called elon before yes i have have you from where ask me who ask me who and i'll say elon someone called elon isn't it? didn't someone i think nicholas it was nicholas cage i think nicholas cage's son or one of his children is called kalel as in superman's real name that's sick nicholas cage wanted to was almost going to be superman once that's probably why he named this kid kalel what are you naming your kid i don't know many many years before i think about that what about you delta force <laughs> 12 <laughs> That's a lovely name. It's a lovely name. Gonna be a good kid, that one. Delta Force 12. 
and his sister, multiple of three. I think I'd name one of my kids Ronaldo. Would you actually? Yeah. Ronaldo Amati. Yo, that's sick, bro. Do it. Ronaldo Amati, bro. That, nah, that's lit. Do it. Ben, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it. What if I went for Elon Ahmed? No, don't, Elon, don't go for Don't go for Elon. Go for X Alpha E A12. That's a much better name. So you think X Alpha E A12 Ahmed. Bro, I can have more than one kid and I can name them. Should I have a whole alphabet of kids? You'll be a busy man. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us laughing like kids, like kids, man. Like, yeah, I'm gonna be so busy, huh? To be fair, I mean, if Boris is gonna chat down to us like little kids, we might as well act like kids. Drop him in that. Drop he him in there. It is, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. On the top of kids, though, did you see that monkey? That monkey was was on smoke. Oh my word! I've never seen anyone so gangster. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I find it funny how the smallest of things like this was a I don't know a 10 second clip it came so viral people were making the artworks of it they were making tributes left right and centre for this just for this small little incident it was pretty insane power of the internet man I first thought it was fake did you? I mean I still do I still do think it's fake how could that be fake bro? I don't know no chance that was fake his primates are very smart where was the monkey? where was which country was it? Indonesia no I don't know yeah I don't really I don't know too much about it I just, I just saw the video and I thought it was thingy. I thought it was fake at first. I saw it a lot and I thought, oh, okay, maybe it's not. But It actually was. Whoa, well, it actually was on in, in Indonesia. I was chatting ish. I oh, was actually. Wow. You know what um what made me laugh actually this week? You know the um the scientist who was in charge of like he was on a he was on a sage team helping the, to advise the government on the on the virus outbreak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about this. Someone's been naughty, naughty, you naughty, naughty. You teasing me. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and he he quit because he got basically broke the lockdown rule and I don't know it was he didn't go to see the woman but the woman came to see him or something right but she was obviously a married woman what I don't get is the fact that he quit because this he's not a politician I don't know why he's quitting no 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 because he was the advocator for everyone staying in lockdown yeah he and that's fine his own rule. yeah but this is not the time for people to be making political oh I'm gonna stay I'm, I'm gonna quit my bro we need you you're a, you're a scientist with you clearly know what you're talking like he clearly knows what he's talking about because apparently he, he like he was the one that, or he was one of the people who gave advice during the Ebola outbreak and he has a lot of experience working with outbreaks and stuff like that so why is he quitting do it sit at home because of I'm not I'm not I'm not saying I agree with what he did but I'm saying that this is not the time for him to be quitting like right now this is the time for you to step your game up and help the country not go and maybe quit. didn't have a choice but the, but that's that also goes to my point of yeah like why do, even if they're like oh resign they, they shouldn't have made him resign anyway they should have been like apologize and let Let's get back to business because right now the country needs you. You're one of the people, the top experts in this area. Why why are they making him quit? It doesn't make sense to me. Do you know what I mean? Or do you, or do you, not, do you not get my point? No, I get your point. You're saying that we need his word of advice in this current moment. It's just you got to understand the way PR and such work. No, but that's what I'm saying. This is not the time for PR. This is not the time for that. This is not, he's not, he's not a politician. But what we've seen in recent times is that people are prioritizing many other factors over the health of and lives of people. So even with like the football and so on, where they're rushing people back, they're thinking about money first or with Donald Trump trying to rush uh, the states back into, uh, into trade. Like it's about money, it's about economy people getting forced back into work and so on. People have more priorities than the health and lives of others, which is what we're finding. And that's very this sad. Period. It is. It that's sucks. Very, that, that, that's terrible because our first concern should be trying to save as many lives as possible and either the person quitting who's one of the top experts who can help us in this situation quitting, even if even if, like, even if it's a case of just put him in the background so he doesn't necessarily give speeches or, or talk to the media or stuff like that, but just put him in the background so he can still do his his job and help because we need him instead of like just either forcing him to quit or him quitting himself that does that's right now this is not the time for any or oh, let's say face or this because right, right now people do you do you think about it yeah? if if you were dying of it of and this there's someone who could help you are you gonna care what they've done last week in terms do you know what i mean it doesn't matter like what he's done. right now it's about using using all the brains all the people who know what they're talking about to assist us in this situation right now. What did he do again? He went to see... Basically, no, I think she came to see him, so... Oh, was it? And he let her in, side. Yeah, I guess. I guess so. <laughs> top man, top man. 
<laughs> but still, man. You didn't listen to Boris's speech when Boris said, if your friend says, do you want to come out? Say no. Hey, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> oh. Oh. I don't think that surprised me, right? Okay, so you know, you know New York subway. So think about it, right? New York, one of the one of the most populated cities in the entire world, right? The subway found out, right? Sometime last week was the first time the subway had been shut f- for the night f- to be cleaned in a hundred and fifteen years. How disgusting is that? That's grim. Uh, imagine all that build up over hun- over a century, man. A hundred and fifteen years. Think about it. There's been two world wars. A hundred. Wait. Let, let, let's let's put this back into perspective. One hundred and fifteen years ago, right? First of all, none of us were alive. Our parents weren't alive. One hundred and fifteen years. So that's what nineteen. What, what year is it now? Twenty twenty. Nineteen oh five. So nineteen oh five. So nineteen oh five. So 1905 was when the subway was opened. 19, since 1905, last week was the first time they've ever cleaned the subway. Think of the millions of people who've been on there. Think of the millions of tourists that New York gets who've, who've been in and sat on there. Imagine the cloth when they were cleaning it and all the, all the uh, gunge that the would have built up. It's sickening. And to think, right, that it was only last week, which is the, the first week of May, is when they started cleaning it even though the virus outbreak has been going for months. So even, so even when all this happened, they still hadn't cleaned it for like months after. That's disgusting. That is actually dirty. That's common for, in many other cities and countries as well, don't you think? I'm sure it's common in some lines in the London Underground as well. It was only recently where Sadiq Khan announced that the London Underground was being cleaned as well. And you're just like, shouldn't this be a regular thing? A bit weird. I hope like, you think it will be common sense. I, I just hope <laughs> that people just... Like when this all is over, people aren't going to go back to like being disgusting and it's going to be... They, a, they will. They will though. Because that is actually foul to think about it. And I think, think of all the places, all the places we've been, all the, like the buses you sat on, the trains you sat on, that loads and loads of people have sat on it before and the germs that have been on there. And you should basically just, you should basically just take your clothes off the minute you walk into your house and wash it. Have you seen that video where someone like, let's you taps their, their sofa and there's a yeah, I've seen that really. dust coming out. That was, I think that was a London, that was a London bus that I saw. That's like someone did that where they basically, and there was another they video where it. they went back home and did it as well. But that is, that is a good point. That was what literally what you said. That is why you should go home and take your clothes off and, and, and not go straight sit, sit on your bed or whatever. We've all been yeah, guilty. Definitely of it, don't, but... Yeah. Don't ever go into your, in, if you've been on public transport, don't go onto the bed. Like the minute you get on, change out of that because that is just rank yeah that, that video was mad it was like enough enough dust and whatnot to build your own beach <laughs> it was mad <laughs> oh man it's so filthy and we wonder why we get we get all these virus outbreaks and all of these things and bro we don't hygiene is very weak hopefully i'm only i'm really hoping that we it's just even if it's like not even if it's not every day at least once a week just clean the thing man it blows my mind though. Surely they must clean it in some way, one way or another. I, I can't see it going for so long without something being cleaned. Like it just wouldn't happen. I had a conversation with someone about it, right? And I was saying, is it is it like a proper deep clean or is it just a clean in general? No, I think that they must mean a deep clean of the stations and whatnot. There's no way that they'd go 115 years without some sort of clean. No way. No chance. I think it's they just didn't word it properly. There is absolutely no way in a over a hundred years of cleaning. Otherwise, things won't look the way they do. Like, I mean, not to say that, I mean, the New York subway looks pretty butters anyways, but still, no way you can go a hundred years without it looking grim be- to beyond the point of just, you can't even look at it. Yeah, what if people, like, people are cleaning it with their clothes? When people sit on it and then... <laughs> so the, the transfer of people is what's keeping it looking completely done up. Oh, oh, by the way, talking about New York, you hear about... A uh, certain someone who calls themselves the king of New York, Takashi Six Nine. Oh yeah, out of prison, but yeah, broke the two million, broke the Instagram story. No, was it the Instagram Live record? Had over two million people on there. Yeah. Did you watch it? No, a lot of people did. I was not one of those two mil. Did you? No. You really don't like him, do you? Though I, I just don't like the way he. I don't like the fact that he says the n-word so many times i just i'm not a fan of that at all yeah so i'm not i'm not and i'm not a fan of his music you are sometimes though i have i've, I've seen you vibing to, not vibing but more like put it this way right if you had a concert i wouldn't go oh no no oh imagine that and the, and that's how I, that's how i gauge who i'm a fan of so you know some just because i hear your um your song on the radio or i might even play 
one song of yours or whatever. It doesn't mean I'm a fan. What if I'm if I'm a fan of someone? If they had a concert in the UK, I'd go. If J Cole had a concert in, in the UK, I'd go again. If Kendrick Lamar had a, had a concert in the UK, I'd try and go. If Jay Z had a concert in the UK, I would go. You know, that's those are what I would say I'm a fan of. If Takashi Six Nine came to the UK and had a concert, I would not go just because I'm not. I I don't his music. I don't think his music is particularly that good. I wouldn't listen to an album from him. Two million people all watching him talk. Fam, you can't. I guess it, you can't hate. You can't hate it. It is what it is. And he knows he's gonna make. He's gonna make millions of pounds, millions from now on again, and he'll be back to normal. The only worrying thing is you don't you don't know how long he's gonna last outside. I mean, yeah, that's pretty of a mad thing. But no, what was cool was not cool. What was interesting was to see how many stars were. I've seen screen screen caps of or highlights on just on Twitter, and you just see a stream of celebs were on it as well. I'm just intrigued to know where he gets all this attention. Like a lot of people have their eyes on him, and it's just because of his the fact we said it last week. These days, people are gunning for weird people or just out of normal behavior, and he's pretty much the epitome of that. Absolutely, I agree. Because I'm thinking, right, his music isn't particularly that good. He isn't. He isn't. He isn't a skilled rapper. He isn't a great musician, right? Yet he he has loads of fans. He has loads of people listening to his music. What? Because what do you think won people over to actually want to listen to him? Like, where do people? I, I, like, I literally think, right? How does someone literally just think? Oh yeah, that new that new six nine song is is hard, isn't it? <laughs> do you know? What, do you know what I mean? I think it's more <laughs> so of the fact that it was a hype song. I remember when Pogba put one of six nine oh, songs. Oh yes, yes, yes. Actually, do you know what? I, okay, that song. I'm not gonna say I like it because that contradicted myself. No, no, no. I don't like. No, okay, I don't. Okay, I don't hate the song. I don't hate that song actually, but. That song isn't necessarily a good song. It's just it's very hype. That's it. There's only so many times you can listen to that song. He makes hype songs. That is his niche. Like you'll never see him break down a song for like lyricism and yeah, he, he will never be that artist. So he knows what he provides. I think he is quite a marketing genius, in my opinion. I think he he is smarter than he looks, in my opinion. Like I, I remember when I think it was in the summer of the World Cup when he just started to make those funny Instagram stories. Yeah, he's he's smarter than he looks. Like that, I mean, he he's portraying himself as a dumb character, but the fact that he put that on and he elevated that to a new volume of looking stupid, and the way those stories were recorded, you can tell that they were scripted in a sense that it was well, it was thought out. So from that, it's not as dumb as he looks. But is it him or is it someone else telling him what to do? It might be someone else telling him what to do, but he's smart enough to see it. And, and but it's working. Yeah, that's true. So uh, yeah, I, I see that he is an idiot, but every idiot has some form of genius if they know how to play it and work with it. <laughs> E.g., there's many. Oh, Lil Pump, Lil Pump as well. I remember Jay Cole once saying he had an interview with Lil Pump once, and he was just saying how he admires the fact that Lil Pump is a lot smarter than people give him credit for because he plays this role of just being stupid, and even with his lyrics, they're not that that smart. It's not word heavy there's not a lot of bars to his music but in terms of his marketing to get to where he has the money that he's made that's all down to him and the character that he's portrays it's as simple as that so man yeah marketing is everything people are smart but do you think right so obviously this 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 is a um obviously your personal choice right but do you think if you're someone who's in the public spotlight do you think you have a responsibility in what you put out there especially with kids and stuff watching you yes but it, it's, it's all down to perspectives it's all down to perspectives it, it, it's down to your values it, it's down to your uh, your the, your sphere of the way you look at the world it, it's sounding very philosophical the way the way i'm talking but it's just the way i view the world anyways and it's down to your values in terms of what's important to you so what the reason that you're doing whatever so if, let's use takashi as an example so for him maybe his purpose is to make money so for example for, for him it's not important what he, he's portrayed as what kids think of him and so on whereas for someone else like obama yes it's important for him because he's not doing it for money he's doing it to inspire he's doing it to make change so i think it depends on the perspective of the person and it yeah it depends on the person basically what do you think for example if i had kids right i would take a lot of responsibility you mean ronaldo amati yeah so for example like ronaldo amati right <laughs> i wouldn't just let him i wouldn't I would try to educate him in a way that someone like Takashi Six Nine wouldn't be his role model. 
So I think, for example, so I just I just realized even I've contributed myself a little bit in the sense of oh, I'm saying do they have responsibility? But actually, no one you you shouldn't give responsibility of people to of other to, uh, you shouldn't give responsibility to other people to raise up your kids. So so yeah. So okay, no, he doesn't have he doesn't have the responsibility to act as a role model to kids or or whatever. Parents should take that responsibility and carers should take that responsibility of making sure their kids don't get influenced by who they don't who they don't think it's they should be influenced by. On that subject, Jace, I always thought it was tough to all that respect and pressure on parents. I mean, obviously they're parents, so they've got to take it. But just from our experience of growing up in the world of the internet, like parents can do as much as they want, but we're going to come, we're going to be exposed to everything. Literally, there is no general shield. Uh, you go to school, you're going to hear everything. You're going to see everything. Like parents yeah, can do true. as much as they want. So I feel like parents are going to get a load of the flack if anything goes wrong. But in, in when it comes down to it, there's not really much that they can do. I mean, the, when things go right, they also they also get all, a lot of the credit as well. So when someone becomes successful, it's like, oh, they were raised up well. And if they don't, so you, you can't. So it does it does work both ways in that sense. I, I do agree that you can't put, you can't say parents have to do because they don't know what's happening to their kids outside of the house. But do you think that's an excuse? Do you think parents should may, maybe parents should take more of an interest in what's going on in their kids' life? So this is what I think. This is what I think. Right? I think the effect. It, we're not parents ourselves, but we're kind of basing this of like what was effective, what worked for us as kids from our parents and how they parented us. But I think pa- pa- it's not what parents shield you from, but it's the values that they teach you, which allow you to process what's right and wrong. And I think that's what makes the difference. That's as simple as that for me. I I, I absolutely agree with that. I couldn't. I literally couldn't put it any way better. Damn, we're, we're smart parents. <laughs> Damn, my my Delta Force <laughs> really love your kids. Ronaldo Mori. Yeah, like Ronaldo Mori is gonna be he's he uh, he's gonna grow up to be a good kid. <laughs> 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 have you have you heard about the um the Hornets? I literally feel like we're living in end times, man. Honestly, we we so obviously the virus, and then and then there was a was, there was another virus that I heard about, which was like some part of Asia. I can't remember which, what what the virus was called. There was another virus, which but that that didn't really take up too much of the like that didn't last long and then there was the giant is it the um, asian the giant asian hornets or the asian giant hornet we just come to the uk and then all, all of a sudden there's the murder hornets and it's like bloody hell when will it end? every month every month there's something oh no and then there was locust in in east africa oh yeah yeah and then obviously now it's the murder hornets and it's like what? every month there's something else bro <laughs> like 2020 <laughs> just <laughs> I saw a meme yeah it was like when the dyslexic Mayan wrote 2012 instead of 2020 when talk about the end of the world everyone thought 2012 was going to be the end of the world but actually <laughs> oh man but nah bro it's literally like another one I'm like oh come on one after another right yeah literally what literally I, I don't know what june has in store for us man oh don't but <laughs> I, I don't want to know was this another one this was another one from asia you know what is asia producing in the last it, it, since the turn of this decade <laughs> <laughs> if you think about it world war three asia <laughs> 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 this virus coronavirus asia <laughs> asian giant hornets yeah yeah oh it is murder hornets also from asia oh my word <laughs> like they want to punish the rest of the world man yeah it's mad 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 we're, we're not we're not we're not accusing that wasn't a genuine accusation <laughs> no 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 no, no. Yeah, no no not at all not at all <laughs> so yeah um, america looks to be in trouble there. And by the way america at the moment A lot's going on there. People are still arguing over... Basically, a lot of people are sick and tired of staying indoors and they're all protesting, for example, to open the gym, to go back to work and whatnot, to be able to go back to some, to go back to church and whatnot. Did you see the um, the people who are protesting now about outside the gym? (laughs) They were doing... doing. Did you see... Did you see the uh, the people protesting outside the gyms? <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. I did. <laughs> 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 
imagine, imagine being so angry about something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yo. That's no. funny because what they were, they were working out outside the gym. So basically, the thing is, they're trying to say that we need the gym and then they're, show, they're working out outside the gym. So they're basically showing that they don't need the gym at all because they can train without it anyways. Oh, my goodness. Imagine, right. Okay. So let me put this aside. Imagine, right? You're angry at someone, maybe like a sibling or your parent or some or, or someone, right? And then you decide that the way you're going to show your anger is by doing press ups in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Now, listen, this world, right? As crazy as it is, is also so funny. Like the things that happen that people think, right? It kills me. Someone for a year. You do burpees. <laughs> what I do <laughs> that, will, <laughs> that will show them. <laughs> we mean business. <laughs> it's, it's in, I don't know what to say, man. I love it. I hate it. It's, it's, it's mad, isn't it? No, nah, that definitely made me laugh. It's just, I was like, who, whose idea was it? And who, and every, everyone who thought, oh, you know what, dude, that's a great, that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, do you want to go process outside of gym? We can do press ups and burpees and, and, and sit up, man. <laughs> wow. What, what a great idea. That's my American accent, by the way. Yeah, that's terrible, but we're going to ignore that. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. <laughs> but yeah no so so america's doing a madness but other countries across europe they are actually ready to come out of lockdown or just ease the lockdown process so for example spain and italy have been going through gradual steps we just talked about us as well in the uk looking to slowly come out of lockdown though it might be a, still a couple of months until we're fully out of it but yeah, no, even that was, brings me over to Germany and others. Uh, you're looking, seeing sports slowly looking to come back as well. Well, more so instead of coming back, they're kind of forcing it, but we'll discuss that eventually. But the first thing I was on to drop across was, yeah, Bundesliga returning and La Liga looking to return as well. What's your thoughts on that? I, I, see, I'm a, I, I love football, big football fan. I miss it a lot. I wanted to come back. Right. But should we be putting people's life at risk for the entertainment of others? I don't think that's right. Hell honestly. no. Hell no. I think we should make sure everyone is safe. Keep everyone as safe as possible. Mate, listen, I, I really miss football. I, I really wanted to come back, but I don't want, I don't want people, to, I don't want people to die because of it. No way. Like it's not, it's not, no, if football is not more important than anyone's life, not one person's life. If, it, even if, even if it's, do you know what I mean? Even if it saved one person's life, it's still worth it. And I think, People need to, we need to have some kind of perspective and, and kind of think about what's important in life. So I'll draw you another question. So m some people are saying that if the players are consistently tested, then what actual harm are they doing to the people? Why is it so dangerous? Shouldn't, the, shouldn't people who need it more be, t imagine, right? So the football is going to be tested, I'm guessing probably every day for every game, right? All those tests that they're, that they're testing them, they could be using it to test the people who actually need it, <laughs> like the like the doctors and the nurses and the carers who are actually, do you know what I mean? Like we're, we're going to be testing footballers just because we want them to come back for our entertainment. So we're wasting all that, all the resources that could be used for people that, for people that actually need it. And we're giving it all to, or, or giving a lot of it. Because they're not going to just test them once and be like, okay, that's cool. They, that apparently they're going to be testing them regularly. So Danny Rose very recently commented and said basically said screw people's need for entertainment people's lives are at risk they're basically humans so exactly why are we ignoring that and i think we need more players to voice their opinions because oh, probably they're probably under the the guidelines of their clubs or whatever to say don't just keep them about it but we should he be hearing their voices because they they have the right to voice their opinions like they are literally if they are forced to play football they are putting their lives on the line and not only themselves, but this is the most important part for me. They will be putting their family's lives at, at stakes as well because they'll be going home to their wives and kids. So why? The statement is that they would they would be forced to basically isolate together as a squad. But then Luke, so you keep, keep them away from their family to basically <laughs> so for other people's end. And it all comes down to money because I was reading somewhere today that apparently if, they, so if the season is void or cancelled or, or whatever, the clubs will have to pay like the TV 
we'll have to pay back the TV rights, which are apparently, so in, the, in in England, that's about three, it was something around like 340 million that the clubs would have to pay back. So obviously money is playing a big issue in this. Are people's lives less important than money? Is basically what, it's basically the question we should be asking. And that is what is happening. Yeah, common sense is basically basically being thrown out the window. And already players have been testing positive for the virus again. But <laughs> to be fair, like these are coming from clubs which are about to be relegated. So a lot of people were speculating like, <laughs> are they chatting? Are they chatting rubbish? Like like for example, <laughs> Brighton reported three players who uh, with uh, who put a test as positive, but everyone knows what position they're in. And then you obviously have Todd Cantwell, who's the player for uh, attacker for Norwich. Uh, but then Norwich are in the relegation zone and things like that. All the bottom, I think like the bottom half of the, of the Premier League are basically saying that there shouldn't be a relegation this year. So then the one, it, one just cancel the whole season then and just start fresh next season and keep, like it was the point of voting to play football and put people's life at risk for things to just stay normal, for there to be no relegation. So why don't just, why don't just leave it? There's literally no point of, yeah, and it definitely should just cancel the just just cancel the thing. Like, if there's not going to be any relegation, what's the point? I think we can all agree they're only forcing this because of money rights, sorry, TV rights and TV deals and whatnot. This is it's literally that. Yeah, of course, it all comes down to money. Just to add to also what I was talking about, like why it, it might be a bit fishy of certain clubs reporting positive cases. There's also Dinamo Dresden in the Bundesliga, whose entire squad has to be in isolation for two weeks just a few days before the league starts. But the funny thing is, this team is bottom of the Bundesliga. <laughs> That's the only team who's in isolation. Uh, so, yeah. But still, I mean, nah. <laughs> Imagine that. But no, nah, I mean, but so basically what they're doing is, if your test is positive, you're, it's treated like having an injury, you'll be out for two weeks, basically. So that's what they're proposing. So anyone who's tested positive is technically regarded as injured and they're out for sideline for two weeks. And they're also proposing neutral venues and so on to get around it. And obviously all the bottom six clubs have disputed this and have said, look, that's not fair because we're losing advantage. Why is it fair that all the other teams that would have played in got to play get their home advantage, but we have to play in a neutral venue, which is a fair point, which is a fair point. It's, it's why not, would we have to play in a neutral venue? Wouldn't it to be home and away? I don't, I don't no, understand the, why. The Premier doing. League are just for safety, so less travel, less movement. Everyone's in one enclosed area and then you just get the football out of it. That's the proposal. So, oh, for example, right. they're suggesting Wembley as one of the neutral venues because there's not been that many games and blah, blah, blah. There's not, yeah, it's just a neutral venue. And that's what they've proposed. And of course, the top six, six clubs have disputed this and the Premier League have pretty much blackmailed them and, and have issued them potential severe consequences if they refuse to play. So, yeah, it's a mess, man. I think the Premier League has probably been the messiest... Okay, maybe only we know about this because we've been hearing most of it and not from other leagues, but all this issue surrounding the Premier League has been messy. I have to say, if there's one thing that I've been disappointed and slightly disgusted by, it's been the Premier League. Massively, bro. Massively. I think that's been dead, the way they've handled it. I don't really think there's going to be any home, home advantage because they're not going to be, it's not going, there's not going to be any fans anyway. So there's going to be no atmosphere, which is funny because it's literally like... So watch, I didn't watch the UFC that happened to... So, UFC 249 but I saw the highlights of some of them and I saw the one where is it Francis Ni Niguanu I don't know how to say his name his last name but where he literally knocked the guy out in like less than a minute that was brutal reaction, by the way. I'm gonna tell you that mad. it was mad it was mad but I was literally listening to the crowd and like listening to the atmosphere it sounded so rubbish <laughs> yeah. it was just dead I was literally I, I think I heard like five people clapping and that's not <laughs> but um but yeah like so yeah that's my so to bring it back to the football it's literally going to be like that there's going to be no there's not going to be any advantage for anyone i know so let's just leave it to the fans can come back yeah and this is where the talk of entertainment is destroyed anyways like football is not the same without the fans so that your your the point of entertainment is totally squashed in in my thoughts because it's not as entertaining without fans. So just wait, uh, null and void, FC. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the UFC, I thought it was even though there were no fans, it was pretty decent. But I think s combat sport when it comes to UFC and football are two totally different things. Though I think I think of course fans do make a massive difference, but when it comes to UFC, I don't see it in in the same light as in like uh, I need to convey this better let me think what I'm trying to say is 
I don't think having fans there is an essential component. As much as football, as much as yeah, football. Okay, yeah, no, no, yeah, as much as football. Yeah, I agree, I agree. But I still think there do there does need to be some fans there. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. Like that atmosphere does make a huge difference. Just think about Conor McGregor's fights and whatnot. Just the atmosphere that 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 garners like is it, is massive in, from an entertainment perspective. Talking about UFC two four nine, it was pretty entertaining. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I, I couldn't stay up for it. I fell asleep. I couldn't stay up for it. But I saw some of the highlights, and it looked, it looked decent. It was good to just get some sports out there. But it just wouldn't. Sometimes you know, sometimes it's not like when you hear the reactions of the um, say someone gets knocked out, and you hear the reactions of the crowd. It makes it seem a bit more crazy, a bit more exciting. Oh yeah, because you That's could the, really, I mean, you could really hear those punches. You could really feel it. Like that Francis knockout. Oh my god, that was brutal. Yeah, that was mad. That was mad. That was mad. I was even the main event was mental as well. Like, what's this thing I was hearing about John Fury? Basically, okay, so basically, Mike Tyson was training. Apparently, he's thinking of doing like a comeback. I don't know if it's for charity or actual professional. So he looks good. He looks uh, even at the age he's nearly sixty, and even I would. He still looks scary. Have you seen his pad work? Oh my goodness! But I would, yo, I would not step into the ring for any sort of no way. unless I was dying. No and I said, I <laughs> go to my family. Then I step in the ring, as in like end me. But otherwise. Bro, it's lethal. Those punches are bad. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So, John Fury obviously saw the same video as well. John Fury, by the way, is Tyson Fury's dad. We spoke about Tyson Fury last week. So, he sounds exactly like his son. It's, Just it's like crazy. Him. Yeah. It's literally, it's weird. But, yeah. So, he wants, so he basically called out Mike Tyson for a boxing fight for charity. What do you think? <laughs> What do you think about that, Rahi? Simply put, John Fury will get battered, bro. I think, what is he playing at, man? At that age as well, you do not want... Oh, I don't know, I don't know. But I mean, <laughs> you know what I think? to be fair, to be fair, if the, a lot of the genius behind Tyson Fury, uh, it, there was influence from his dad as well, So, but never underestimate the Furies. Do you know what I think? I think he's just, it's just clout chasing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He saw that Mike Tyson was trending and he thought, let me try and get in on it. It's the same thing Tommy Fury did with KSI. We could really saw that KSI was trending because of the whole f- boxing thing. He wanted to get cash in on it as well. Bro, they, it's, they know what they're doing. It's, it's, all, it's all about the money. Just say something outrageous and people will be like, what? Come on. And then that will gain you all the clout you want. <laughs> basically, basically. Yep. For example, I'm saying we, we, our podcast is better than Joe Rogan's. Definitely. Say something. What? <laughs> uh, but yeah, nah, to, to end that statement, nah, bro, he's mental for going in, but never underestimate the Furies. So, so shall we wrap up then? What are your recommendations? Do you know what? One thing we've said this past week was that we, we have not been focusing much on the COVID stats and that's kind of because we've been trying to focus less on, on, on the virus itself. We want to talk about the situation. We want to entertain you guys and, and just have fun. We don't want to keep talking about, because everyone knows what's going on. So we'd rather just talk about other issues around it and just other, like not actually talk about the virus itself and, and, and stuff like that. So that was our idea. But recommendation this week, I've literally only been, I haven't really watched much. I've been very busy this week with work and stuff. So I've literally, I've only been watching Community because they're obviously like short 20 minute episodes and I watch it every now and then. Oh, actually on the weekend, I took a break and I watched Becoming on Netflix, which is the Michelle Obama documentary. Honestly, I recommend that to anyone, anyone. It was amazing. I watched it and I, and I felt inspired even though I wasn't a woman or a black woman for that matter. But just, I literally, because of that documentary, I want to buy her book just to read it because it just shows that the president obviously is the, is the face of the presidency, I guess. But there's also, she also d- did a lot. So obviously Obama was, was, the, was the face of, when the, of their family as the president, obviously. But she also is a very spectacular and amazing woman who's actually very, very highly educated, very smart has accomplished a lot as well. And just the way she was, she, she's trying to inspire a lot of women to get, like basically be educated, be kind of aim high, not, not just settle for anything. That is very inspiration. And even me as a man still felt inspired to aim high. And I didn't feel like, oh, this is just for women. And it was, I, I just thought it was a very inspiring documentary and I really enjoyed it. So I, that's actually what I'm recommending this week is becoming on Netflix, the Michelle Obama story. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good. For me, I would 
again, I've not really been much watching much TV. Do you know what? Actually, I th- I feel like initially we must have got really excited with all the free time that we had that we would have probably binged a fair amount. But after a while, you kind of get used to it. And I've, like I said, like like yourself, I've I've not watched as much TV or whatever as when I started off. This week, I, I've only pretty much just watched one episode of. I thought I'd start something new soon as I finish every other show. That was that was on my list, but uh, that that was Ozark. I've only watched one episode, but it looks and seems quite interesting. So I'm gonna carry that on. It looks pretty decent. It looks pretty. Yeah, decent. I've seen I the. Think, I watched it when something. it first came out a few years, a couple of years ago, and I watched the first, maybe about the first half of the first season. Did you fall and off afterwards? Kind of like, you know, sometimes when, it happens a lot. Sometimes I'll be watching something, and then maybe maybe I get busy, and then I don't watch it, and then I just forget about it. And I think that's what it was. And I, but I've been hearing a lot. A lot of my friends watch it, and they're literally saying that it's really, really good. So I may have to go back and Talking basically start it again. Talking about friends' recommendations, one of my friends has been telling me to watch Afterlife. Have you seen that yet? I've, I've seen season one. How was uh, it? Yeah, I've seen season one last year. I haven't seen season two yet. Apparently it's really good. I... <sighs> Personally, I just thought it was very depressing. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, I always thought it's dark, dark humor though. It's very dark humor. It's very like I'm, I can't believe you watching. I'm like, oh, this is uh, this. <laughs> it's not light. I just yeah, it just wasn't light. It just wasn't light. It was just a bit heavy. Is it so? Okay, it's dark humor, sure. But is it one of those that make one of those that like make you think, or is it just depressing? Is it is it something that makes you think about life, or is it just depressing? For me, no, I didn't. I didn't get that from it. But get, funny get enough, what, I get what, spoke, get what, get what, get what. I didn't get any, like, I didn't get any, I, I it didn't appeal to me personally. And actually, I'm actually, I actually think Ricky Gervais is funny. I, I like some of his old stuff. He's awesome. Like He's the a office. comedic genius. I actually met him this year. Yeah, yeah. I met him in uh, in Sweden randomly. No, you're joking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of him, but I'm, I, but I'm not a big fan of Afterlife. Wait, you met him? What happened? What happened? So actually, that's 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 a funny story. So basically, I went I went on holiday with my brother and my friend, and we're literally exploring uh, Stockholm, and we walked past this hotel, and we literally saw a bunch of people. We wondered, Wait, what's going on here? So we literally, as we're walking past, we're like, "Oh, it's Ricky Gervais!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then we took a picture with him. Nice, nice, nice. So I was like, "Ricky, can we get a picture of you, please?" He's like, yeah, sure. I'm like, "Cheers, mate." <laughs> <laughs> oh that's sick yeah. that reminds me of so, uh, yeah. how we met what was it called Zanetti oh, we met Zanetti at the airport in Milan yeah that was sick oh yo that was mad. that was mad that was mad because we just met Zanetti and we went downstairs to get to the what was it the, to the gate and then I was like guys guys it was me you and Paddy and I was like guys guys that is Danny Alves from and I could see it from a distance for some reason I can just tell footballers faces from afar and you guys were like get out of here we just met Zanetti there's no way there's another footballer about I was like that is him and then we literally walked right past us <laughs> As he got closer, <laughs> you believed me, and then we were, you were oh, <laughs> and then his, and then the, his his bodyguard was like, his bodyguard was like, nah, nah, nah. nah. Him. nah. I was like, mm. nah. <laughs> now I do what I rate about. Now what I appreciate and will always remember is how you got me that picture with Zanetti because I was like, nah, 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 I don't want to take like, oh yeah, yeah, I yeah. didn't want to bother him, but you're like, nah, nah, let's go, let's do, it, let's do, it, let's, do it. Like, no, 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 let's go for it, let's go for it, and then we then we got it. Ah, oh, good times. Ah, oh, that Milan trip, we actually we need, we need to talk about. It. We need to do an episode on what happened in Italy. Because Italy, Insane. that was that a was, trip and a half. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Which we'll touch upon <laughs> soon. But yeah, yeah back to the recommendation. We will do that. We will do that. Yeah, I, I've also got one other recommendation, which is, of course, you know it, Mr. Robot. Guys, if you're smart, you just, 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 just watch it. That's what I'm gonna say. You, you're smart. You, you watch it, and you'll love it, and you'll enjoy it. Do you know what? I'd actually like <laughs> one thing. I'd like to say, right? Yeah is I'm really glad about the fact that people messaging me, some people message me about some of the recommendations, how they've either enjoyed it. So I'm very glad that we've been able to put you guys onto some things and just help you with, or basically, yeah, to basically just introduce you to new things. So if you guys also have any things that you think would, would, would be beneficial, let us know and we'll tell other people. It's all about having a community, helping each other, putting each other onto different things. So yeah. That, that is 100%, 100% spot on. And on that note, should we go onto our socials? Where can they reach us, Jace? Okay, so I think I've got it right now. So <laughs> on Instagram, we're the covers dot of dot life underscore. Twitter, covers of life one. Facebook, covers of life. And our website, canvas hyphen of hyphen life dot com. And we have some pretty cool stuff on there for you. We have stories from all over the world on what life is like in lockdown. Check it out. Let us know what you think. If you think you'd want to write for us from wherever you're listening from, get in touch with us. 
And let's see. As always, well, now it's not stay inside anymore. Now it's stay alert. So yeah, stay alert, people. <laughs> um, <laughs> stay alert. Save the NHS. Um, whatever Boris else said, I don't even know what else he said. Just, yeah, apparently stay alert, people. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> so, st- stay alert. And until next time, <laughs> keep, keep safe. <laughs> so stay alert and then until next time um yeah keep safe <laughs> it's been a pleasure guys till next time